Yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 check it out. Y'all here with Carl Holmes, my boy Thomas Butler, our special first guest, first episode, Darnay Holmes. And uh, good, man. pretty much uh, we're just going to start it off with, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's tuning in. Um, I know time is very important, one of the most important essences you can have in life, and you can't get time back. So I appreciate all of y'all tuning in to listening or watching, seeing what we got going on here. This is something special to me, something I've been thinking about doing for a while. Um, I just didn't have the confidence to do it. But, you know, with the right support system, I got some people to jump behind me, and um, we took this thing off the ground. It wasn't overnight. Me and Tom has been talking about this for about two years. Um, my production team, we've been going over for the past six months trying to make it happen, and it's finally here. Um, Thomas, what's up, man? You my co-host. What's good? Man, I'm ready. You ready? Talk sports, NFL, college. I'm ready for it all. You ready for it all? Yep. Well, man, this is the locker room, man, and my first guest is is, is my younger cousin slash brother, Darnay Holmes, and um, today was a big day for him. So um, I, I want to let him talk about that and, and, and the decision he made today. Yeah, so pretty much uh, it was a well-thought-out decision. And it was a decision I made on my own. You know, I was advised. I wouldn't say I was influenced, but I was definitely advised. And I did my due diligence. And the main reason I made my decision is because <clears throat> before I made the decision, I read something in the book, and it said that when you take a risk in life, you'll always land in divine hands. And once I read that, it was time to go. You know, so I feel like a lot of people are scared of taking risks are scared to suffer by the end of the day those type of things are inevitable so you got to stay locked in stay in tune and plan out everything that you want to do in this life so when you say decision what decision did you make i need you to let the people know because i know what decision you made <laughs> I, I, i've been knowing for a while i mean it was a point in time where i didn't know and i was like man and i got people on the outside asking me hey man is your cousin like you know what is he gonna do and i'm like man i don't know i couldn't tell you and they're like, how you not know? That's your cousin. I'm like, man, I don't know. But, so tell the people what decision did you make today? So pretty much the decision I made was uh, to forgo my senior year and take the next step to the NFL. You know, it was a uh, a wise decision on my end, an important decision that I made. And I already know, I'm, I already know that it's only up from here, truthfully. Okay. Okay. That's, that's respectful. Um... There's a lot of people out there that have been waiting. Today's the deadline. You got some guys that declared that we didn't think we we're going to declare. We got some guys that are staying that um, I personally thought should have left. Uh, Travis Etienne, a running back from Clemson, he had two great seasons, and I checked Twitter about an hour ago, and he's coming back to school for a senior year. So um, personally, I thought he should have got on. I personally <laughs> thought he should have got on. But, you know – I mean, you make whatever decision you want to make. I'm a support because that's what I'm here to do. It's not my decision. It's not my life. Um, my job is to support you um, and whatever mm-hmm. you, d- you decide to do. So with the decision being made, man, like it's tough because you go from being one of the top athletes in the country, not in California, just in the country, um, and when you go to UCLA, which a lot of people had their if ands, or buts about, and uh, you do your three years, you graduate in two and a half, which is big, man. I know how hard it is to graduate, um, being a college graduate. So you being an athlete that you were and playing, I had a lot more time on my hands than you did because you played <laughs> way more than I did. So um, how, how was that, man? How was, how was going to school and being a star football player? Because I think you're one of the biggest, if not the biggest recruit UCLA has ever landed. How was that? Uh, so pretty much it's not that fairy tale everybody think. You know, it's not a lot of females chase you. It's not that. You know, you don't get access to basketball games. You can't walk up to the basketball game and be like, my name is Darnay Holmes. They'll be like, man, where your ID at? <laughs> like, All right. So it's like certain traits. I mean, not traits, but certain uh, accessibility that you don't have that you think you may have. But truthfully, uh, I wouldn't trade the experience at all. The three years I went there, I learned a lot as a man. You know, and I truly feel like, College is something that we should all experience because that transformation from 
a teen to the man is vital, you know, and I feel like if I didn't go to college, uh, I wouldn't have this transformation that I'm in. I wouldn't be at this stage that I'm in right now, but it was definitely some long nights. It was definitely some nights where I'm on the phone with my girl crying because I thought, I thought I lost it all. You know, I thought I lost my abilities, you know, because it was times I was on that field and I wasn't at my best abilities, you know. Uh, coaches will influence you to get on the field for uh, for us to win, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. for you to be at your best ability, you know. Mm -hmm. So once I started learning those things, started learning the game in and out, I started learning that your body's a business and your, uh, your mindset is vital. Mm. That's big, man, <laughs> because most people don't see that. You know what they see? They see Darnay Holmes, five star. He goes to UCLA. He, he goes to UCLA. <laughs> he starts as a true freshman. You know, he has some up and down his freshman year, but pretty decent freshman campaign. Come back as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Pretty good sophomore campaign. Build off your freshman year. Play against Hollywood Brown, first round pick. Pretty good game. Got an interception against mm -hmm. him. You go play Nikhil Harry, first round pick, pick against him too. Pick six. Yep. To so the house. You, you you had some big plays at UCLA. Um, I think a lot of people would say they expected more. Um, and me, myself, knowing what I know, I'm on the inside. Most people are on the outside looking in, but I'm on the inside, so I know certain details of certain situations. Yep. Um, but just overall, how do you feel about your UCLA career? Uh, truthfully, I feel like it ended the way it should have ended. You know, ended the way it was scripted to end it. But going into the year, I thought I was going to have more accolades, more uh, shiny objects, I should say, such as stats, stat line high, you know, uh, no touchdowns and all those things. But once I started learning that, you can't place no expectation on things and started learning that at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade my junior year for anything in the world because truthfully – the transformation I had as a man, the things I learned as a man, the state of mind I am now as a man, the people I influenced at UCLA, it was incomparable. You can't imagine that. Because at the end of the day, those stat lines, that only lasts for so long. That stat line is expired now. I left UCLA, but the people I influenced, they still were able to take those insightful conversations we had with them with the rest of their life. I feel you on that. That's big. And... I think it's very, very important <laughs> to go through adversity early because mm -hmm. if you don't, when it hits you, some people never bounce back. Some people never bounce back from adversity. I've experienced my own set. Um, my co-host Thomas, he hasn't said anything yet. I don't know if I'm here by myself or what. <laughs> I don't know if he's shy, I, camera's rolling, we finally here. You know, he been he been in my DM talking about, <laughs> man, you start this podcast without me and Da, 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 da. Now we here. Say something, man. You well, got... I wanted to ask you uh, my own personal question. Um, you know, do you feel like Chip Kelly uh, prepared you for the NFL? Uh, most definitely. I definitely felt like he prepared me for the NFL. Literally, like, I'll say before Christmas time, I stepped foot in Chip Kelly's office, and he gave me the layouts. He said pretty much, mm -hmm. if you're not a first or second grounder, you get released, your name not going to be hot on the block. You're mm -hmm. not going to be somebody they want to pick up. So you got to understand the decision you're making. He backed me up on my decision, you know. He gave me the ins and outs. You know, he was a, a head coach in the NFL, so he broke down the salary cap. Mm -hmm. He broke down pretty much where I'm projected at. He showed me intel, you know. So pretty much he put his best foot forward, and I definitely put my best foot forward on getting as much intel and information as I could. Okay, uh, so as far as, like, you preparing, what's what's some things that you're doing to get yourself ready to get there? So, like, your training regimen, what you eat in, how many times you hit in the field, what are things that are doing? Plus, you know, for you to be healthy as well to make sure you're 100% when you're ready for your pro day. Yeah, so pretty much uh, right after season, I had to get a, a, a shot inside my ankle, a PRP shot. It's pretty much a, an ejection that's – circulates the good blood and puts the good blood within your ankle so mm -hmm. your ankle's able to heal in the uh, right time manner. So I was able to go back to my uh, my local roots out in Proactive, Westlake. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was able to go train with, my opinion, uh, probably the best person out there, Tito. And it was, the layout was pretty much to get me back to my best ability but beyond my best ability, you know. So get me back to a stage that I couldn't – I couldn't think of, you know, and I. it was days where I didn't know if I was going to get back right. It was days where 
I swear, I thought I wasn't going to play in the senior bowl. Like, mm-hmm. I can show you my notebook. I said, going back to UCLA, very unlikely, unlikely senior bowl, not going to happen. Combine, run it up. So, looking back thoroughly to those notes, it was all God, you know? And it was at a time that I had to walk by faith, but pretty much going on a, uh, the training regimen and protocol, I wake up early, get a quick 15 to 20 minutes read in, uh, go train, pretty much PT in the morning, then go train, hit some field work, get the 40 back right, uh, start certain agility things, get a little rest. That break, within that break, I eat some uh, breakfast, and then I go back to the gym, and it's either an upper or a lower lift, and it's just a hour max of the lift, and the lift is pretty much worth your while, you know? You're going to be straining, and everything that you need to do within an hour is done. Okay. Okay. That's mm. that, Do you feel like um, what you're doing right now is going to prepare you to be able to test at the best of your ability because – I think it's very, very, very critical and important that you test well. And I think it's very, very critical and important that you go to the Senior Bowl and you show out because there is a lot of doubters. There's a lot of people that say, I don't know about Darnay. Mm -hmm. Five star, he he made some plays. I seen him get beat. Injuries. Injuries. I I mean – do you feel like everything you're doing right now is preparing you to be the best? Because I I know what you can do, mm-hmm. but I'm not a GM. I'm not a, a coach. Scout. I'm not a scout. I'm not any of that. So I know your ability. So let the people know, you know, what you think. Yeah, so pretty much when I made my decision, I made sure that uh, I crossed my T's and down my I's. I made sure that I was not placing myself in a disaster. So when I laid out my portfolio for where I wanted to train at, Proactive is at the top of the list, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, a, uh, in my opinion, a hidden gem, a hidden secret, and the results are there, you know. You know the results are there when they could bring out a notebook and show you the decrease of times for 40. They can show you what David Long did last year. He trained out Proactive. Mm-hmm. He's from the city. He had the best agility time. Shout out Pasadena. So pretty much when I was making my decision on where I'm going to train at, who I'm going to go with, where I'm going to live at, I made sure that it was all to create the best version of myself. And uh, I'm not going to lie. When the GMs ask me what's a weakness of mine, I'm going to let them know that a weakness of mine, which has turned to a strip, is pretty much not listening to the critics, you know, Mm -hmm. staying out my mind and understanding that these people who's talking, they are real-life people with real-life problems. (laughs) So at the end of the day— You heard what LeBron said, but go ahead. At the end of the day, (laughs) I'm going to stay in tune with my path, I'm going to script out everything I need to script out. And I'm just going to leave it up to God, you know, because God dwells within me, dwells within all of us. So if I keep him first and I believe I have his favor, you know, he got me this far. He has a abundant amount of blessings ahead for all of us. So we put on his armor every day. We untouchable, seriously. Yeah, I feel that. And you heard Agreed. what LeBron said when he lost in the playoffs a couple years back. He said, man, at the same time, those people that are criticizing you, ridiculing you on social media, on Twitter, those people got to go back and live their same everyday lives, no matter what that mm-hmm. is. They got to go back and they got to live their same everyday lives. And at the end of the day, me and you, we have our talks. You call me. Um, we talk all the time. I pull up to the house and, you know, we have our talks. And at the end of the day, I tell you, it's just football. Like, literally, all you're going to do is end play football. Day. Mm-hmm. Play football, take care of your body, take care of your family, um, keep your your faith right, um, never lose faith because all you need is the faith of a mustard seed. I'm not sure if you know how big a mustard seed is when you don't. If you When you got time, I, I want don't. you to Google. I want you to Google how big a mustard seed is because that's all you need is a, the faith of a mustard seed, um, and you can move mountains with that. Um, so let's, let, let's, let's talk about this, though, because a lot of people out there want to know, well, Darnay, five star, superstar. He didn't have a good junior year. Why not grad transfer? Why not? Why not go to Ohio State? Why not go to a premier program Cleansing. where you could display your ability and and return kicks and punts and maybe play a little <laughs> bit of everything. offense and you know why why not do that and and probably boost your stock up? Why not? Uh, it's crazy that you said that. Uh, of great friend of mine, an assistant coach I used to say, like, before the Cal game, I told him, like, man, I'm about to graduate to Ohio State. 
Mm, so that was actually a thought in your mind to grad transfer to Ohio State. Yeah, it was, it was a thought. Mm. And that was before the uh, the balls kicked off at 7 o'clock against Cal. Mm -hmm. And then after the game, you know, I told a few other of my family, friends, that uh, that's most likely my decision. But as I sat back and started reflecting, I'm like, this college thing, the ball is never in your park. You know, the ball is never on your side. So I'm at a point that I want to take ownership of everything, you know. I want to make sure that I'm in control of my destiny because – at the end of the day, I seen a lot of things go south at UCLA with a few of my homeboys, and now, you know, all they got to fall back on is the education. Mm -hmm. You know, and just going back to the game, the national championship game, what the coaches is collecting from the players, the revenue that they're grossing, it's like a player should be able to break bread from that. But I feel you. when I made my I decision, agree. though, truthfully, just outside of materialistic things, outside of money, uh, a mentor of mine gave me an NFLPA committee archive article, and it would say pretty much if you're deciding to go or deciding to forego your senior year, you should decide of if you go return to school to get your degree. I got that. Check that off. Uh, return to school to boost your stock to gain more money. I'm not playing for the money. And... That's all it was. So once I was able to check off those boxes and understand that if I do take it to the next level, which I am, I'm going to be able to learn so many new tools, so many new things as a person, meet with so many different people that I wouldn't have been able to do that if I was still in the college realm. Mm -hmm. You know, so stepping into this NFL realm, it's a bun amount of things that we all co uh, collectively build from. You know, so... Every time I'm doing something, God placed a vision in my heart that I feel like I don't need validation from anybody else, you know? Yep. Because, honestly, if you seek validation from anybody else, they like thorns from a weed, they going to they gonna suck the energy out of you. You'll you know? never be happy. Mm -hmm. You'll you never, never be, be happy. You'll never be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, think that's, I think that's big and that's major because, I mean, you're making a, a decision. For one, you don't get to go back and do Mm -hmm. It's not like playing college basketball where you can say, hey, I think I'm going to test out the league. And then you could go back. And then you can go back. You yeah. can't do that in football. Mm -hmm. So um, with you, you took all your options, weighed them out, and said, you know what, I'm just going to bet on myself, which I think is, is fantastic. I think that is respectful. That's honorable because it's not a lot of people that want to do that. It's not a lot of people that – can listen to themselves and just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to do what's best for me, and I think that's big because at the end of the day, whether you turn into Richard Sherman, Stephon Gilmore, or whoever, the Deion Sanders, if you turn into that person, it's going to be because of you. I mean, your surrounding people, they obviously play a factor in your growth, but at the end of the day, it's on you. Darnay's getting up and he's going to practice. Darnay's getting up and he's going to put in that extra work. Darnay Excellent. is watching film. So mm -hmm. it's not on anybody else, and if it all crumbles – they're all going to come back and look at you. They're not going to say, hey, man, you know what? I actually played a part in this. I should have said this or I should have said that. They're going to turn around and be like, hey, man, that was you. That was you. You did that. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you could have risked, you know, going back, not have as good as a year. You get hurt. Mm -hmm. Then your stock fall even more. You go undrafted. And then you just, you know, that's just a situation you do when you think about going back. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, definitely when I was making that decision, I don't want to play devil's advocate, but – at the end of the day, you got to be able to face reality. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be able yeah. to weigh out your options and face reality. And I feel like we live in a world that people are scared of facing the reality of decision-making, facing the reality of inevitable suffering or trauma that you're going through. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, everybody's going through something, you know? Like, it is what it is. It may be different weights that people are going through, but everybody's going through a problem, and it's all about... How you gonna solve that problem? As Carl said, how you gonna flip that page? You know, how you gonna be able to make that problem and come with a solution right then and there, you know? At the end of the day, the solution was able to the problem I had was figuring out if I'm gonna make the decision or not, you know? So after the season, I had until today to make the decision. I could have said I was declaring a few weeks ago for some clout, for some Instagram likes, but I had to do my due diligence and think it out thoroughly. And when I made my decision, you know, throughout this whole decision, I was training like I was going to the NFL, mm -hmm. and this here we are now. We about to head to the Senior Bowl. 
<laughs> the senior bowl. And and what's what's neat about that is is you're not a senior. That's that's the neat part. Yeah. So you're not a senior. So how do you get to participate in the senior bowl if you're not a senior? Yeah, so pretty much me and my uh brother Eno Benjamin, we was able to graduate within a two and a half, three year spectrum. Jesus. And from UCLA, the number one public school in America, that's big. I don't ever want you to forget that. Now that's for sure, man. I don't ever want you to for forget sure, that major. because you can go to the NFL and you can get cut and you went to the NFL, they took that away from you. They uh-huh. can never take away from you that you went to the number one public school Degree in America and you graduated in two and a half years Why being a superstar on the football field. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. But nah, that uh, it's crazy you said that because that that graduation feeling didn't hit me until I was taking uh, pictures with Joe Lenz. My girlfriend was there. We was on Figueroa and I looked at the little, what is it called on the graduation hat? The little tassel. 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 And it said 19. I'm like, I graduated from Calabasas at 17. 17. Two years. Remember that. So that just gave me chills saying that. So once I understand that, that everything I'm going through is already scripted, you know, it's ordained, and all I got to do is put my best foot forward and give God the honor, you can take it as far as you want to take it. it. And a lot of people try to place ceilings on you, but you can never place a ceiling on yourself unless you place limitations on yourself. But another person can never tell you where you're going to go, how you're going to get there. So at the end of the day, they're not the one waking up doing what you got to do to get to the destination or the vision that God placed within you. Facts. And, you know, this would be my last question about this, but what do you look forward to the most? What do you – because your life is about to change dramatically. Mm -hmm. You're about to go to somewhere like – if you go, like, let's just say – if you go to the Tennessee Titans, when you go out, everybody's going to know, know you. Who you are? You know, like if you're an LA Ram, it's a little different because for one, it's so much going on in LA, and you got a helmet on. But in Tennessee, mm-hmm. it's not really much to do in Tennessee. In if you go to Cleveland, <laughs> if you go to Cincinnati, I mean, it's 32 teams you can end up on. So yeah. your life is going to change dramatically. Everything you're done is going to be monitored. Um, under a you're microscope. Gonna, you're going to be under a microscope. There's going to be some things that, and we'll get into this a little bit later, there's going to be some things that a normal person would do, and they would just be like, hey, you know, that's cool. But if Darnay Holmes does that, now you belong to an organization. You belong to the Raiders. You belong to the Cardinals. You belong to the Jets. You belong to somebody. Mm-hmm. So everything that you do is watched, and you're about to have some money. And yeah. a lot of people are going to come with their hand out. They're going to feel like you owe them something just because y'all grew up together. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how, how are you How are you ready or what are you doing to prepare yourself for that? Because that's on top of football, learning a playbook and dealing with all that. You're going to have to deal with a whole bunch, budgeting, making sure your people is right and making sure you're right, Eating making your sure your girl rest. is right, making sure you eating right, you sleeping, you steady progressing like – what are you doing to take those steps? So pretty much uh, I'm making sure I'm putting a solid foundation behind me, you know. And right now we're just planting the seed, you know. And when you plant a seed, it's not much noise being made, you know. So if you're not seeing me on social media, at the end of the day, you might not be able to tap in with me, you know, unless you're close or family friend, unless you're somebody that I actually feel like you're vital or somebody that I want to impact or inspire, which I do through my uh, social media account. But I make sure that I got a team around me that, I'm just truly focused on football, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at my finances. I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at my accounts. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be an athlete that just gives somebody my account. Nah, I'm not going to let that go down, you know, because at the end of the day, a lot of things can go wrong. You know, a lot of people have different motives, and I understand those things. I was able to read up upon those things. So I'm at a point that I trust, but I'm going to verify if I can trust you or not. You know, hey. I'm going to go talk to clients that you had before me. I'm going to talk to clients that is probably a free agent or is probably on injured reserve and see how you're treating them. Mm-hmm. You know, so That's it's big. a lot of things that student athletes should do, you know. Student athletes should do their homework before they sign with the agency. You mm-hmm. know, if you feel like you can't do your homework before you sign with the agency, then you're not ready to take that next step. That's just, that's just my belief. You know, I have my own opinion, mm-hmm. but that's what I feel like people should do is really just do their homework, you know, because... You got time to check Instagram, you know, and time to chat with friends, but 
you only got one career, you know? An agency yeah. has several other clients. You know, yeah. a financial advisor mm -hmm. has several other clients. So you got to understand that you want to make sure you get the best out of this amount of time that you have on this on this realm. You know, you never know when, God forbid, this game is taken away from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you must put your best foot forward each and every day and truthfully just be mindful and live in the moment and everything, you know? I'm in this studio right now with y'all, and that's all I'm thinking about. Perfect. You know, everything else is is second to none to me right now. That's going to come apart when it comes upon me. So pretty much everybody should just be in tune with their self and just love what they do and just follow your bliss, truthfully. You know, don't be somebody who's out there doing something that somebody's making you do because you're not going to put your best energy to it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you're going to be shorthanding the person that you're working for, but most importantly, you shorthanding yourself. Yeah, I agree with that. That's big. Mm -hmm. That's big. And I got to say this about you, man, because I know – Man, they talk about your dad. Your dad's a former NFL player, um, standout at John Muir High School in Pasadena, local high school for us. HS, man. HS. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, your, dad's a, your dad's a former standout, and he played in the NFL, and you have this superstar ability, this natural. They call you the natural. Um, I don't know where this Nay the Great came from, but I thought your name was the natural. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, he's Nay the Great now. Um, but they call this guy the natural. And outside of your natural ability on a football field, I hear a lot of people talk about Darnay the person. Like, you're mm -hmm. just real. You're genuine. You're authentic. You don't like to disappoint a lot of people. You don't like to to see people down. You don't like – like, everybody's around. Like, you're all good. Like, it's, I, I've been around you many a times. Like, you like, as long as my mom, my sister, my brothers, my, my nephew, my niece, as long as they're good, then I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So – on top of that, I just want to commend you for being the person that you are. But appreciate y'all. I gotta let you know your new favorite word gotta be no. Mm -hmm. That's oh, gonna yeah. be your new favorite word. I'm sorry, I cannot do it. I'm, I I can't. Can't please everybody. I can't. Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely, cannot definitely. do it. I'm sorry, no. Yeah, that's definitely where uh, I've been lo learning slowly but surely. You know, I'm not gonna be an ATM because at the end of the day, my pops was at ATM. And he was went bankrupt at a point in time. So that testimony that he lived, I was able to learn lessons from that. You know, so at the end of the day, you should be able to take lessons from anybody. You know, no matter if the person is not in your position, if the person is in your position or they below your position, you can learn anything from anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I learned from my pops is pretty much go get what's yours. But also, while you're getting what's yours, don't be an ATM. You know, I know you want to help everybody. I know you want to uplift everybody, but those people you want to uplift nine times out of ten, they only there when you got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's big, man. That's big. Okay. Well, hey, man, best of luck to you and your new adventures. There's no telling where you can end up. You can stay close to home. You can Ain't end no up on telling, the other man. side. You Anywhere. can be in New York. Cleveland. You can be in Cleveland. I Buffalo. hope you don't. Oh, my God. You go to Cleveland. Go I could be in NOLA. In <laughs> <laughs> you could be in I, I, NOLA. That's something cracking. I, I, would, I won't like you. I'm praying like Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, somewhere cheap and cracking. I want you to save a lot of money. But that's another story for another day. Um. Let's see, man. Let's let's jump into some of these topics, man. Cause uh, yeah, let's hop into those. Let's let's hop into some of these topics that we got to discuss, man. I think let's tap in. Let's tap in. I think my first uh, <laughs> Thomas, what you want to talk about first? Man, let's get to that national championship. Ah, okay. I know you watched it. <laughs> so uh, first and foremost, I want to know what you think about B Burrow, cause man, that Joe Burrow, that 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 dude right there. Now, I thought he was the truth. Uh, the Oklahoma game. I just saw that look in his eyes. I'm like, sheesh, ain't nobody going to ever stop good. that, man, you know? But just you can see the energy that they had as a team. Mm -hmm. You know, if everybody has great energy, everybody's doing their 111, player no row, you, you're untouchable as a team. You know, with a, a great foundation and coach behind you with the great culture, mm -hmm. I haven't seen a, a culture like LSU in a cool minute. Like, who can you – in the past decade, who can you say – Played like LSU this whole year. Nobody. 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 And, and I would say, me personally, and <laughs> I got some statistics to back me up. But, oh, uh, hold on. I think personally, I think this is the best 
college offense I've ever seen. I might have to agree with that. And I think Joe Burrow had the best season a quarterback has ever had. He threw 60 touchdowns, NCAA record. Mm. 65 total touchdowns, NCAA record. He had 76% of his passes completed, Mm -hmm. second best ever in the NCAA. He had a 202 QBR quarterback rating. NCAA record, <laughs> over 6,000 yards, third most ever. He beat seven out of the top ten teams, mm-hmm. another record. His last three games, who did they play? They played Oklahoma. They played Clemson. Oklahoma. They played Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Georgia, Oklahoma. They won at Texas. And uh, they played Georgia, Oklahoma, and Clemson. Mm-hmm. He threw 18 touchdowns, zero interceptions against the number two scoring defense, the number one scoring defense in Oklahoma. I'm not going to speak on their defense. (laughs) There's no need to. Um, And against his top ten teams. (laughs) Shout out Fofo. Hey, Hey, Buki is my guy over there, but I I mean. Shout out Buki. Hey, shout out Buki, man. Boots, dudes, TJ, man. Got his tub. Yeah, my boy. touchdown, My boy, TJ, man. But also against. Top 10 teams, he completed 75% of his passes, 27 touchdowns, 398 yards, and and two INTs. And, and the funny thing is we didn't even talk about some of the teams he beat. He beat, you know, he went to Texas and won through four touchdowns. He went and uh, he beat Florida, which is a ranked team as well. They have a top defense. He beat Auburn as well, and then he beat Georgia, and then not to mention Oklahoma and Clemson. So all those teams that he beat are all good football teams and teams that are always trying to get to the national championship and get to the playoffs. And on top of that, he won a Heisman. He won a Maxwell. He won a Walter Camp. He won a Johnny Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. He won a Davey O'Brien. He's the AP College Football Player of the Year, Sports News Player of the Year, unanimous All-American. I mean, everybody voted for him. Everybody. Every voting poll. The SEC Offensive Player of the Year, first team SEC in College football playoffs, national champion, MVP. He's for sure going to the Bengals. If they don't take nobody <laughs> else, they stupid. That's where he needs to go, and he's going to do his thing over there too. Yep. So with that, man, we're going to wrap it up. Um, we're going to get back into some of these um, these topics, and we'll be right back. Mm, back off for a quick break. Had to take a quick little intermission. Make sure everything was good. A little water break, halftime, peel the oranges and all that. <laughs> peel the oranges, cut them in fours. <laughs> Remember them days, man. And I had to have the bananas, no oranges, or it's over with. Oh, yeah. You allergic to citrus fruits. <laughs> over with. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's all bad. But um, so we just, we just got done talking about LSU and Joe Burrow. And you know the season they had, the recap they had, and while why why they should be you know the topic of discussion for the next off season or the next couple of weeks or whatever. Somebody else is making headlines that um, at LSU, and it's not one of their current players. It's a alumni, Odell Beckham Jr., superstar receiver who plays for the Cleveland Browns now, um, was seen on video one giving out money. Um, Two going into the you know the stands, turning up on the sidelines, going into the stands, taking a microphone from the band, and you know screaming out whatever he said. I th- I, th- I thought he was intoxicated or whatever, but uh, most famously slapping the locker room security guard on the buttocks <laughs> on the ass, um, which a lot of people got their opinions about. Um, all I can say is, as a professional, you got to handle yourself in a certain way. But me personally, um, in that moment, I don't think that warrant an, uh, uh, a warrant for arrest. I don't think it was that. I don't think it was that egregious. I don't think it was. I think that was more of, hey, tighten up, hey, loosen up a little bit because we just want a natty. And while he wasn't a player, people were like, oh no, you're not a player. You shouldn't act like that. But. I mean, it was it was locker room protocol. He just smacked him on the back. No, nah, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, you shouldn't even be touching somebody you don't even know. Um, I think that was very inappropriate. You know, a lot of kids are watching as well. 
Um, and then, you know, being intox- intoxicated on national TV, walking up to the band, taking a mic, I don't think there you should be doing any of that. You taking um, all the spotlight off the uh, team that just won the national championship. You know, I think uh, as a pro, you should uh, conduct yourself very uh, professional, and Odell didn't do that. And he's been doing that all year for Cleveland when he was playing for the Browns, and then that's the reason why they got rid of him in New York. I don't agree with that. Did you feel like he was doing that because he didn't have a productive season as he thought he'd have, so he wanted the spotlight on him? I don't think it's necessarily that. I think he's just a guy that loves the spotlight, but you got to you gotta be appropriate, bro. I, I don't agree with you touching another man, but – and then you don't even know this dude. So, I mean, I just didn't like it. And in the band scene, he looked pretty drunk. And he was just grabbing. And you could tell the security guard wanted the mic back or the horn. So I just think uh, there's nothing, there's no room for that. Especially when the LSU team just won a national championship. You need to be putting a spotlight on them. I, I just, I, it's just so tough because being an athlete, and I don't know if you can attest to this, um, but they just won a natty. The security guard was – so let's back up. Let's back up. Let's, who, won, well, let's, who won the natty? LSU, LSU just won a national championship. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, they're smoking cigars. They're playing in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, the Saints' home stadium. They're in New Orleans, mm-hmm. 60, 60 miles away from their campus. Mm-hmm. Everybody's there. Um, stop grabbing the mic like that, bro. Before I start tripping. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Hit you with the but, mic. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're they're 60 miles away from home, and the security guard was basically, if you can hear the audio on the video, he's he's like, hey, are you are you smoking a cigar? Are you do you have alcohol in there? And they like, man, back up. Odell looking at him from behind, which I don't, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not agreeing with what he did. But I'm just saying, at the time and the moment of what it was, he smacked them on the behind. Like, hey, man, these is college kids. Like, loosen up. Like, yeah, like, he, you can't but smoke. Did he, but did he say that? No, he didn't say yeah, it. Yeah, he didn't say he that. He didn't say I it. I think he just liked what he seen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe he did. And if he does, that's on, that's on him. I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. But, I mean, he in the locker room, man. I'm Let man, the player smoke. Because, listen, he, man, was, kill it. he was tripping about – them smoking a cigar, but another security came in and said, it's okay to smoke cigars. Man, well, kill it. Well, what it is is the alcohol, because a lot of them kids ain't 21. 21. So they couldn't drink alcohol. If you see, he was tripping off dude with that drink, and he, like, telling him basically, like, this is a Gatorade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the smoking part, 18 and older, you can smoke. So, But, yeah, I don't, but that might not be the rules in that building. Yeah, no, but you, yeah. can't, you couldn't smoke inside the building. But then another security guard came in and said, hey, you know what? It's okay to smoke. Yes. So, I mean, I don't know. I've never been a part of something like that. So, um, I know for me, I'm very passionate about my high school, John Muir High. I'm alumni. I mean, my city, people are passionate, whether they went to Pasadena High, which is our rival, mm-hmm. or John Muir High. They take pride in that. So, if John Muir High wins a state championship or a CIF championship, I'm not going to go out to say I'm going to act as far as Odell did, but I know some people who went to – my rival high school that act crazy every time we got to play in the turkey tussle, which is our rivalry game. They act crazy. They act stupid. Fans act crazy all the time. They go, they get drunk, they act stupid, they cuss people out, they fight, they do this. Odell was like, this is me. I'm LSU. I, I, I played here. I laid the foundation for y'all. I am one of the best to come here. So I'm just, hey, I'm pumped up. My guys just want a natty. Look, I agree with that. But the problem I had with it is if you on the street, if you celebrating about something, are you going to smack a random man in the ass? They're not on that's the street, how you get beat though, up. But they're not on the street. Yeah, but the slap, I think they was past the slapping on the ass part. They was already in the locker room. I don't know what school y'all went to, but slapping ass in the locker room was out. Was out. Now, on the football field, it was cool. But yeah. in the locker room, that was like, that's a little too much. Yeah, I don't know how. That. Y'all speak on that. What's y'all experience in the locker room? Nah, first hand. Somebody walk around with no towel on and just walk around <laughs> naked. It's like, bro, what are you on? You know? So yeah, yeah, I don't if agree somebody with that. just in your presence just letting their stuff out and just want to have a conversation, I'm nine times <laughs> out of ten, I'm going to walk away from me or I'm not even going to act like he in my presence. But I'm saying, was they slapping ass in the locker room when you was there? 
<laughs> Man, he don't want to say it. Yes. Man, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We in the locker room. <laughs> we in the locker room. Ain't no slapping ass in here, but yeah, it's a few I'm just homies who, who had those type of traits. You feel me? But it wasn't a common trait, you know, where That's Odell weird. possessed that uncommon trait. And he slapped a security guard, bro. Yeah. Oh, that's Odell did kind of like look. He looked. He, he sized him up. He sized him up. Like, oh wait, like he let liked me what he <laughs> see. I like that. Let me. Know, uh, yeah, I don't agree. That was suspect, man. To go along with his suspect actions. Yeah, man. He got too many of them, bro. He. I don't it's, think it's cool yeah. to chill out on any level. <laughs> I mean, unless you playing in the game and y'all in the game and y'all pumped up because you just got an interception, it's a big game, just to do it to some random person, nah. Odell's a, a attention seeker. Exactly, mm, he just love agree. attention, bro. I don't. I could agree. And it seems like he'll go to any lengths to get to some, get it. To I, get I can it. agree with that, yeah, and that's why. I can, and some I people like that, here. and you just got to know what you're dealing with. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can agree with that because there's a lot of other professional athletes. And LSU alumni like Tyron Matthew that was on the sideline and we never heard nothing about yeah, it. He had a, he had his son with him taking pictures with the guys mm -hmm. and Mike Thomas was there. Ezekiel, Ryan Clark, Ryan Clark, Ezekiel Elliott, Patrick Peterson was there. Nobody even knew. The only reason why I knew is because I saw a picture on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So Odell, I just think he was pumped up living in the moment. I think he was intoxicated off. For Hennessy. Sure. He was. I think it was off Hennessy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know it'd be, 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 like be a lot more than liquor nowadays. <laughs> that, 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 that dark <laughs> liquor give you energy. That's what they said. I don't know what that type of energy that uh -oh. is. But, um, you okay. Don't know, you don't know what he mixed it with. Yeah, That's I don't know what he mixed it. I don't got nothing to do with that. You got to keep that straight. But um, I got a question for y'all, man, my people that's that's right here with me. Uh, let's start off with you, Darnay. Talk to me. What's your definition of hating? He's a hater or she's a hater. Uh, I would say not sharing joy when somebody's on a path to greatness. You know, downplaying them, down talking them, or talking behind somebody's back. And when you get in front of their face, you are, what's happening, homie? You feel me? We love. Let's take a flick. You feel me? <laughs> All those type of things. So I would say hating is not sharing a vision, a partner or associate or a human being has and just downplaying their vision because that person may get to where you want to get to faster than you get in there or you might want to merge into their lane because they got there so fast and you just leading yourself to self-destruction because that's not your authentic route. So I will say hating is just taking away a person's sacrifices that they had to make to get to where they at now. Okay. You, Thomas? I think uh definition of hating for me is uh like I don't think hating is well, definition of hating for me is like if there's a player that's good and he's putting up all these amazing stats and everything, and then you say he's not that good. So that, if somebody was to say LeBron James is not a good basketball player, that's hating. That is hating. Whether you like him or not, <laughs> that's hating. That's hating. Yeah, it's hating because okay. you know LeBron's great. Okay. It's different if you're talking about a player that's not that good or something like that. But if you're talking about a player like Jordan and you say, oh, he wasn't that good. I think Charles Barkley was better. There's no facts behind that. You Charles are we Barkley, talking about hating for sports or just in I'm general? I'm just talking in about general. general. You could say sports, general, whatever you want. to. What's your definition of hating? It's hard to say. I, I think hating is like when people compare Jordan to LeBron – and they compare their stats, but then when people say uh, LeBron is trash, he's not trash. That's he's not hating. trash. Yeah, that's hating. So it's like you can't say he's trash. He might not reach the peaks that Jordans did, but yeah. he's not trash. He's not trash. Yeah. But okay. that's that's for our sports talk. But hating, man, hating is like when you bring in somebody else down okay. to try to elevate yourself, yourself. or someone else. It, mm -hmm. it don't always be your. It don't always be you. Yeah, it's yeah. always elevating because I could be saying that. He's trash and trying to say that he's better. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So, and ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. What's your definition? Uh, I mean, I agree with everything y'all said, but me per me personally is, you know, bringing, bringing somebody else down to uh, try to elevate somebody or if mm -hmm. they're just 100% without a doubt good at what they do or successful when you're saying that they're not, then that's hating. Yeah. And I bring all this up to say I got to make this very important because I get a lot of slander about this on Twitter um, I do not hate Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson is a good player. Do I think he's elite? Not yet. Do I think <laughs> he? Differ. Do I think he's um on his way to becoming? Yes. Um, am I a fan? 
somewhat, but at the same time, uh, I have the right to choose whoever I want to choose. I think it's important that he succeeds being a black quarterback, but I personally, I don't have to be a super fan. I can say I like him, but I don't like him that much. So people slander me because Lamar Jackson, who's the NFL MVP of the regular season, which he deserves, Mm -hmm. I personally don't think he can throw the ball that well. I mean, uh, I think Lamar is elite. Um, First player in NFL history to throw for 3,000 yards and run for 1,000. So, I mean, I think he's basically going to change the NFL. He's going to make it where quarterbacks that maybe couldn't throw that good but can run – will be able to get a shot more than just a typical pocket passer. But, you know, this is just his second year playing in the NFL, Very second young. playoffs. Very young. So I think that he just needs more time. I mean, we gave Mike Vick time, and he never really did anything with That's it. That's another thing. You think that Lamar Jackson's better than Michael Vick? Do I think he's better? Me personally, I do. Me personally, I don't. I don't either. I think, I think he had a better setup. He had better support. Yes. You know, Michael Vick, they tried to convert him. To a pocket passer, yeah. which he wasn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And see, with, with this team, with the Ravens, they came in and they catered to his strengths. His versus natural Michael, ability. Michael Vick, he had to come in and he had to change his game to fit a system that he couldn't he really couldn't thrive fit. in. Okay, so fit. let me ask you something. Do you think in the playoff game it was Lamar's fault that they lost? I now, think they was dropping a lot of passes, bro. I don't. I they dropped five. I cannot put – the whole playoff game on Lamar, but being a quarterback, it's very important that you play well in the playoffs, and he hasn't. Agreed. 0-2. Oh, so he think, hasn't. Wait, wait, wait. But he's he young. has hold not on, hold on, hold played on. well. So you're telling me his overall, he had a, he didn't play well? That He had 365 passing yards and 143 yards rushing. Stat, hey, that's. Five drops. That's a, that's a, that's a great stat, but I watched the game. And a lot of those stats were the game. He was, it, was, it was over. He was down, and he was desperation. That 150 he had on the ground mm-hmm. wasn't the 150 he got during a regular season. And let me explain what I mean by this. No, I totally understand. He, ha- he had 150 this game off, oh, I'm going to drop back. Oh, nothing's open. Oh, I can't make that throw. I'm going to scramble and run. As opposed to in a regular season, it was RPO. Oh, let me give it. Let me pull it and make a play with my legs. Mm-hmm. That wasn't that 150. They were shut. But, Mark Ingram was shut. But let's talk. No, Mark, but that's well, what I'm saying. He didn't. They running game wasn't working. Ingram only had 22 rushing yards. You see, can't blame that but on. But you got to understand, Carl, how that game was set up and they was down. They coaches panicked. They, they coaches. Did. They I coach, agree. They coaches John Harbaugh, choked, bro. John Harbaugh choked. It, it wasn't as much as him because he was he was in a position to fail because they not they're front runners. They not people who come out and come, come back. from behind. Yeah. yeah. So I agree. now. I agree. A lot of them plays, I guarantee you, they wasn't even practicing them plays. No, they, he threw the ball. Six, they, he had sixty attempts. Yeah, they, that's that's not Raven football. That's and, not what they've been doing. And we're not even talking about the Ravens defense. But if you really look at it, they was still into that game on that on the lat, in the fourth quarter. Towards the end, it was like fourth and goal. If they would have scored right there, that would have changed the whole game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I agree. I don't think he played super bad, but he lost. He now, lost. If you compare the last year playoff to that playoff, now last year that was. Terrible. Yeah, that yeah, was horrible. horrible. <laughs> he, he's improved. I, I give him his credit. He's improved. But until I see him have his moment in the playoffs, I can care less about scoring five touchdowns against the Miami Dolphins. I, it I means nothing to I me. I personally don't think he's better than Michael Vick. But, but we didn't talk about how the Ravens gave up 218 rushing yards and Henry it's, had 195. It's not, it's not all on him. No, okay, that's, 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 that's what I'm that saying. That was a total team, that was a team effort loss. loss. <laughs> but Lamar's the quarterback. He got to take that. Darnell, you like Lamar? Speak on it. No, I'm a fan of Lamar. Uh, definitely somebody I'll do a lot of film study on. When we, uh, If I do have to face him, he's a dual threat. He's versatile. He definitely can rip it. He can rip he it. Can, yeah, he, he, can. Can th- he can throw he the can f- actual football. He can, he can, throw, he can throw down the field. He, he got an arm. He can arm. rip it. He can rip it. And you got to make sure he don't break you off. Yeah. I, pers- I like personally, Bush with the rock. Like yes. I, I personally think he's a better runner than Michael Vick with the ball in his hands. No. I, per- I no. personally think he no. is. No. When he puts the ball down and he's a no. runner, no. I think he's the best quarterback ever as a runner. I, ever. But we don't think about look, Go look at no. some of the clips Michael Vick had big my, runs. I wish we could. I want to say top he, end This speed. is where we he, need to put them on the, on the screen because <laughs> Michael Vick, he legit. He's, ju- he's, ju- <laughs> he's a better guys. thrower than Michael Vick. 
No, Michael Vick got a way stronger arm. No, no, I'm saying thrower yeah. of the football. I don't think so. I, I, I think he would be a better thrower. I think he had a, a better supporting cast than Michael Vick. Yeah, he did because That's if actually. Algie Crumpler, your best receiver, receiving threat, <laughs> then you ain't doing nothing. If he would have had, if Michael Vick would have been in that system with them, I think with Michael Greg Vick Roman cried. and RPO. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, he, he was an offensive coordinator. This, Cap yeah, was exactly. in the same system, and he for succeeded me, in San Francisco. For me, me personally, I don't think that. I, I was saying the whole season that I think that the NFL is going to catch up to that college style. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I kept saying in the playoffs, it's not going to work. I said the I, same thing. I wasn't thing, a believer in but, that. But does that mean you're a hater, though? No, I'm not. I'm not hating. No, exactly. no, 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 no. Because I'm on because Facebook, that's what I got. on Facebook, I did post that on somebody's post, and they were saying that I, they did. That was their exact words, like you hating. You a hate. But what, what am I hating? Because I just know football. It, I've been watching football all my life, and one thing I know, if I don't know nothing up in life, <laughs> it's football. Yeah, and, and that's what they was they were that? ridiculing me on Twitter for that, saying, "Oh, you know, you're a hater," because I just said I just don't think. He can throw the ball that well. Well, I, I don't – it wasn't me thinking that he could throw. I, I believe he could throw because he showed it during the season. What did mm-hmm. he have, like 3,800 yards passing? He yeah. had 3,200, 30, 30, 36 yeah. uh, passing touchdowns. Okay. He led the lead in passing. He only throw. six interceptions. He could throw, but I just think that the NFL wasn't just going to allow you to uh, succeed in with that – RPOs? What, whatever that shit. That's I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is get out of here. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think that was gonna work out. All right. So let's let's transition into this last topic, man. This last topic is is something that's important to me. Um I think it's it, it needs to be talked about and that's why I made it the last topic. Um so you guys can all give your opinions on this. Um I seen you talk about this, uh James on Facebook and uh the Rooney rule. The Rooney rule. It has to be talked about. For those of you who are not familiar with the Rooney Rule, um, the Rooney Rule is a rule that was created in 2003, I believe, by um, the owner of the Steelers, Mr. Rooney, which basically states that when you're interviewing for a head coaching, there's a, if there's a head coaching vacancy in the NFL and you're interviewing um, a person, there has to be a minority interview, Hispanic, Asian, black, whatever, has to be a minority interview. And um, we only have, what, three black head coaches in the NFL right now? I think it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's three. Miami. Three. It's three black head coaches in the NFL right now um, laying in, in, in with the Chargers. I almost said San Diego. L.A. Chargers, Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh. They still San Diego Chargers. <laughs> and, <laughs> they and, ain't got and, no home. Yeah. <laughs> they still and, San Diego Chargers. And, and Brian Flores in Miami, man. And, and I just think – Well, just, they consider um, – Rivera, a minority too. Okay, he's well, Rivera. With, yeah. uh, what, what is he with Washington? Yeah, yeah. he's with Washington. Mm-hmm. He ain't black, yeah. but he's a minority. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then we only have two two Office. offensive coordinators that are African American, and I just think that it has to be something that's done. The, the rule is implemented, but obviously, there's nothing that's being done about it. Man, seventy around seventy percent. 68 to 70 percent of the players are African American, and I think it's big. I think it's big that for one, they understand our players, they understand our backgrounds and where they come from, so they're not quick to judge a player or make a quick decision on based on, oh, he did this, let me suspend him, let me find him, let me do this, let me do that. I just think it's let me sit down. Like I've been there before, bro. I, I understand. Like I, I understand what you're going through. I think it's important, man, that they're able to relate and talk to him, but. I mean, with three black coaches and two offensive coordinators, like, where are we going? Well, my personal take on it is, like, you, going back to um, Lamar Jackson, a lot of quarterbacks coming up, they're looking at his style, and it's going to – it seems like a lot of the quarterbacks is going to start being black. Yeah. And, you know, traditionally, all the quarterbacks is cerebral people, people who – um, run the offense and people that think, you know, they didn't give us credit for that. Mm-hmm. And that's the, you know, that's a position of power on the field. And so now that that's starting to turn black, the head coaching job, that's the last hope for them, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And so w- once that the head coach become black and black quarterbacks and, and 70% black athletes, <laughs> it ain't their league no more. Yeah. So they got to, they want to stay, they got to have some power somewhere. Yeah. Like, I, like my personal thing is going to turn into the Negro Football League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's what it's going to be. I, I'm just so disappointed because 
we had five coaching vacancies this year and not one black coach got a job, man. Eric B. Enemy should be a head coach right now. I personally now. think they should just get rid of the rule because it seemed like – it just seemed like it's a um, – like we're begging. They're they're forcing us to beg to get a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it just looks bad all the way around to me. That's yeah. just my opinion. I don't even think they're trusting black men to be leaders exactly. of other black men. Leader of any man. Of any man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's the problem. They don't have no faith in us. Yeah. Because and if, you, if you look at black coaches, once they get fired, they never get hired they again. They never nope. get hired again. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Raheem it's Brock over. Never I'm, got another head coaching job. I mean, uh, the guy in uh, Detroit, uh, what's his Caldwell. name? Caldwell. Jim Caldwell. He was fired because they won nine games in back-to-back seasons. They wasn't winning enough, but Matt Patricia is – Old boy from um, that just got hired with the with the Cowboys. He just they didn't they the Rashard, Packers, Mike McCarthy yeah McCarthy they missed the playoffs two years in a row and he was bringing the Packers down and now he just got head the head job you in the Cowboys got, like the you, number one job in football. But you do got your Marvin Lewis's. You do. He had plenty of chances. But look, but look at look at look at the job he took. They was terrible when he came. Yeah, he turned them into a perennial um, playoff team. He did. Yeah, man. I think I think that's something that we got to talk about. We got to rap more about. Um, I appreciate y'all coming through, man. This is our first episode. I'm happy. I'm proud. I'm ready to take off with this thing, man. Appreciate you, Darnay, for appreciate coming through, man. Love, I know your know. schedule is crazy, man. Trying to get this together was crazy, man. Appreciate you, James. Appreciate you, Thomas. Thanks for having me. Appreciate, uh, appreciate all the listeners, man. And we up from here, man. God bless. And motherfucker, I got five on the 20 track. It's like that, and as a matter of fact, to touch, touch. Cause I never hesitate to put a nigga on his back. Yeah, so keep out the manuscript. You see that it's a must be dropped. What the fuck is that?